Well, as you can see, the title of my sermon of today is Consequences. And I have a definition for this. It goes, that which follows any event or effect produced by some preceding act or cause. So that's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind as I go through this. I have a question for you. When you were baptized, upon baptized, at tit baptism, your sins were forgiven. This we know and understand because God has told us this. But is it possible that a consequence from some prior act remains? In my case, it does. It's true. There is one consequence in my life that has become a thorn in my flesh. It is, is, it is something that it doesn't occur daily. It's intermittent. It's periodic. I mean, it could be weeks or even months before I'm confronted with it. It's this kind of thorn. But I have been dealing with this thorn for decades. Five, to be exact. And as this thing happens, there is a consequence that comes with it because it brings shame. It brings discouragement and humiliation. It knocks me to the ground. And there's a reason for this, and we will get to that. But there are many, many times I have cried out to God saying, Why? Is this going on? Why all these years? It comes to, I can win the battle, but I cannot win the war. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one that deals with this. I'm sure there's others, many others, that, that there's something there. But, it get, I get to a point with it where I rise up in anger and I confront it and subdue it. It's done. Until so many weeks go by, so many months go by, and what I think happens is I get too comfortable with myself. And when that happens, this thorn makes itself known. And the cycle starts all over again. In my pleas to God, after all these years, he has finally answered me. And I am glad he has. Because it brings a different light, a, a different feeling about this whole thing. Now if you'll turn to James 1.4, and I'm using the contemporary English version here. But there's something I want you to do. At the very beginning of this verse, place your name there. And now I will read. It says, Jeffrey, but you must learn to, do, to endure everything so that you will be completely mature and not lacking in anything. But in this time, in this experience, God has a way to bring a message to you personally, and he drives it through this verse. And it speaks directly to you. It's not general. It's direct. And what God was saying to me was, keep fighting. Do not Give up. Your war will be won. I promise you. And with that promise, he also said, and you will be standing alongside my son when that day comes. So what God is doing, he's encouraging me. 
yes, I do get discouraged and weak. But he's saying, keep fighting. Don't give up. Your war will be won. I take great comfort in that. But God continues in his answer to me. And he says this, I, God, am the one who began this good work in you and I won't stop until it is complete on the day that Christ Jesus returns. Well, one thing I love about God is how he can drive a message through a verse directly for you. What he said here comes out of Philippians 1, 6. Out of the same translation. It says the same thing, but in Philippians 1, 6, it's a general, it's a general verse. What God said to me was direct. I asked for that. I said, tell me why for all these years I have been dealing with this thorn in my side. It's in a sense a new experience for me before God's suddenly coming from behind a verse with a direct message. And I'm sure there are some of you that have also experienced that. But God continues. In Isaiah, verse 30, I'm sorry, chapter 30, verse 21 in the New International Version. He says, and I'm gonna put your name at the very beginning. He says, Jeffrey, whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. I will be honest with you. In all these other years, I knew the voice was there, but I really didn't hear it. Shame on me. But with this experience, after all these years, I now can hear this voice. I will listen. I am so tired of this, that this fight for 50 years. And like I said, it's not a daily fight. It's periodic. Weeks, months could go by. And then I get to that comfortable state with myself. And guess what happens? That thorn makes itself known. And I get knocked down to the ground because of that. Dave, will you go back to the, that graphic, please? There's something very important here. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, and this comes from the translation of a complete Jewish Bible. This is Paul speaking. And I, I paraphrase because I wanted to take the heart out of, out of the verse. It says, to keep me from becoming overly proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh so that I wouldn't grow conceited. Paul is obviously had a problem of pride. And when you read the, the verses that are around it, it talks about because of the revelations he was receiving, that there was some thorn in his flesh. Don't know what it was. Have no idea. But it kept him in check. But what I'm going to say to you today, what is my thorn? My thorn is simply this not responding soon enough. That's what had created this thorn and that consequence of shame, discouragement, and humiliation in myself. How this works, when this thorn would make itself known, what I was doing was allowing it to linger. 
thinking that I had it in control, thinking it's not going to hurt me, how wrong I was. Because the end result, like I said, was the shame, the discouragement, and the humiliation. So what is God actually saying directly to me is, Jeffrey, when this thorn makes itself known, respond now and subdue it. And if you will do that and listen to me, this thorn will become less and less and less over time. What the bottom line is here, brethren, is keep fighting. Do not give up the fight. Whatever war you're in, whatever thing brings you down to the ground, you will win it. God says, I promise you that. But there's a beautiful part to that promise where he says, and you will find yourself standing alongside my son when that day comes. Brethren, these words are for you. And they are also for anyone who hears and understands.